Welcome back to Tanya in 5. The last few days we have been studying chapter 52. In chapter 51, we began the process of trying to understand what it means that the Divine Presence, the Shekhinah, rests in a certain location. Now, the first thing we established is that notwithstanding the fact that when it comes to Divine Manifestation, there might be multiplicity, it does not negate the essence of Divine Transcendence and Singularity. In the same way, the soul remains one singular and divested from the division that the body presents, and yet as it manifests in the body, key word here, as it manifests within the body, that's where changes start to emerge between the life that's in the eye versus the life that's in the nose and the ears and the fingers and so on. But the soul's essence remains singular, one, transcendent and indivisible. Likewise, God, even though in terms of how he manifests within creation, there's a difference between the way God creates the earth versus the heavens, but God's essence remains singular, transcendent, and concealed. And now in chapter 52, we get to the term Shekhinah. The term Shekhinah is a term to describe divine manifestation within a particular world. Divine essence, as we explained, is transcendence, singular, one, and indivisible. But divine manifestation, Shekhinah, that is where division begins. Now, in the same way that when my soul manifests its life within my body, the life first starts in the brain. In the brain, there is contained all the life that will be spread throughout the body. So likewise, as divine manifests energy to be invested in creation, there is a singular unit that contains all the potential energy that will emerge within the particular worlds and that particular unit of energy is the Shekhinah. It's the first vision God has for this project called creation. That first vision, that's the Shekhinah because it is from that vision that will emerge eventually the various particular worlds. Now that original vision this original Shekhinah, the first divine manifestation of energy that will eventually create worlds, is in and of itself too large for any one singular particular world to be able to contain. So there has to be some sort of uh, vehicle, or in the words of the Alter Rebbe, garment, a vehicle through which we can interact or worlds can interact and receive energy from that Shekhinah, from that divine manifestation. That vehicle is the Torah and Mitzvahs. Torah and Mitzvahs is the reason and ultimate objective for this entire project called creation. Now, if this is the reason and ultimate objective for the whole project, then it will be the medium by which we can elicit divine energy to be invested in our worlds, because that was the reason for the divine manifestation. And thus, in every world, the Shekhinah, the divine presence that's manifest for that world will be contained within the Torah and mitzvahs as expressed in that particular world. And this is the process of how it happens. We begin with the world of the divine. This world in Hebrew is called the world of Atzilut. It's the world of divine intelligence, the world of divine attributes. Now, the final of these attributes is the capacity to project, much like when I speak to you. The idea starts in my mind, and then through my speech, I project the idea into you, and then you use your mind to contain it. So likewise, the divine projects energy, and it's received by the capacity of intelligence of the next world, which is the Torah of that world, and thus can create that particular world known as the world of Berea, the Torah there is the logic of Torah, the rationale of Torah, the Talmud. And then from there, it's projected into the next world, the world of Yitzira, and so on and so forth. Each world receiving through its Torah, through the Torah of that world, receiving the energy from the world above it. And in that way, the divine energy and the divine Shekhinah goes through a system of slowly, slowly descending from one world to the next till it finally makes it to our world. And in each world, the 
rationale, the Torah rationale of that world is the place of the Shekhinah, which can contain the energy that's being projected to it from the world above it. The takeaway from all of this is, in every world, whether in the broad sense, a full world, or in the smaller sense, the world of music, the world of mathematics, the world of sciences, the world of art, my world, your world, these are all particular worlds. And in each of these worlds, there is a center point, a Shekhinah, where the divine energies manifest in that world to give that world life. That center point, where the divine energies manifest in that particular world, is Torah. And therefore, look in every world, whether it's the world of mathematics, art, music, and so on and so forth, and find where does Torah exist? What's Torah's message in that particular world? And if you've grabbed that, now you've interacted with the divine in that particular world, as it manifests in that particular world. Looking forward to seeing you when we conclude chapter 53, where there we're going to discuss divine manifestation here in our physical world and its relationship to Torah and Mitzvahs as we do it.